And then I just test to make sure it's not too hot. If it's too hot for me, it's too hot for the bees. Once a week, amateur beekeeper Sarah Wallbank oh, inspects her hive. Pardon me. There you are. Everybody clear? To ensure the tens of thousands of honeybees she tends to continue to thrive. I'm looking for any signs of disease. Earlier this summer, she noticed her bees flying at night, unusual behavior for the species, smashing into her porch light and dying. Doesn't seem natural, doesn't seem right what they're doing. So that's when I started doing the research. Wallbank collected the dead bees, sometimes dozens each morning, sent them for testing and learned she had zombie bees, the first reported case in Canada. That little brown thing, yeah. that's the empty cocoon. The bees are infected when the tiny forward fly lays an egg right in the back of the bee. That egg hatches out and then the larva crawls around inside eating all of the bee flesh, including the brain, right? And that's, you know, I mean, you can imagine how crazy that would make you. So you think you've got what it takes to be a zombie hunter. The term was coined by this San Francisco researcher in 2012. He's behind the website Zombie Watch tracking infected bees across North America to try and find out just how serious the issue is. It is unfortunate that these labels tend to sensationalize the issue. This BC bee expert says worrying about the bee population is important because the pollinators are integral to crop health. But right now, zombie bees are not a major threat. It could be that in the future some of these forward flies uh, can affect more bees than we currently are aware of. But that is mostly under circumstances where the bees are already weakened. They're just so active. And with colonies dying from mites, fungal disease and pesticides, this is just one more threat that keeps Wallbank as busy as her bees. Renee Filipponi, CBC News, Lanceville, BC.